Episode 25, What the Puck? Originally posted March 23, 2013. When you go through the rosters of most classic superhero teams, you will find that many of them share characters with either similar personalities or powers. Most of them have your token big or strong guy, a speedster, a water guy, maybe someone mystical, a god, and of course a leader who's either draped in a flag or at least has the personality of a boy scout. That's one of the reasons why Canada's own Alpha Flight has always been one of my favorite superhero teams of all time. Although they have all the usual suspects on their roster, Sasquatch the strong guy, North Star the speedster, Marina, water girl, Shaman, mystic, Snowbird, demigod, Guardian, leader draped in the Canadian flag, they also have something that most teams don't have, and that's Puck. Who? Looking at a group picture of the flight, the little dude in a dark leotard with the hairy arms and legs with a bright orange P on his body does tend to easily catch one's attention. Meet Puck, the little Canadian superhero named after that solid hard compressed rubber disc that is hit around the ice by men on skates with sticks. You know, Canada's number one sport, hockey. Or is that curling? So while doing some extra reading on Puck, I came upon a funny theory speculated by a fellow fan and artist named George O'Connor. He theorized that when Alpha Flight creator John Byrne wasn't allowed by Marvel's editors to use Wolverine in his book, he went on and created a character who was even shorter, hairier, uglier, and more Canadianer than Wolverine to take his place. And thus, Puck was born. So what makes Puck so special? What exactly are his powers that make him such an integral member of Alpha Flight? Actually, if you go by the original intention of Byrne, Puck was supposed to be just a regular little person with no superhuman powers. He just merely had exceptional fighting skills and was highly acrobatic. Then, much to Byrne's disappointment, when he left the series, later writers started adding more to Puck's backstory that made him more than just your average little person. According to his revised history, Eugene Milton Judd, who was born in 1914, grew up to be a seven-foot-tall adventurer. Think Indiana Jones, but taller, and no hat or whip, maybe. Anyway, in one of his adventures, he was hired to steal an ancient blade called the Black Blade of Baghdad. Unfortunately, the blade actually turned out to be a prison for an ancient sorcerer called the Black Razor. And in his attempt to steal the blade, Judd accidentally freed him. With not many options available to him, he managed to trap the Black Razor within his own body. While he survived, the Black Razor fed on his life force, causing him immense pain and making him shrink to half his height. Now, before you start feeling sorry for the guy, Housing the imprisoned sorcerer inside him also gave him immortality. Actually, a never-ending life of pain does kinda suck. Still, years later, after a run-in with another Alpha Flight villain, the master of the world, his body was subjected to genetic manipulation, causing his body tissue to condense at a molecular level, thus making his body rock hard. Well, okay, compressed rubber hard, like a puck. So now he spends his days as a member of Alpha Flight kicking Master of the World type butt by cartwheeling at them at full speed and knocking them silly with his rock hard body. I don't know if you find this whole story silly or not. Admittedly, growing up, he was sort of my least favorite member of Alpha Flight as he was always moping about how small he was and how he was always in pain and was incapable of being loved, blah blah blah. Nowadays, however, I've come to accept, no, appreciate his presence on the team and the unique element he adds. Plus, the Puck action figures I've had in my collection, and to be fair, there haven't been many, have been quite fun. The first one I got was the one they released for the smaller Marvel Universe line. He was a cool little figure that came with his own little itty bitty white bird. Actually, the bird was supposed to be his fellow shape-shifting teammate, Snowbird. Although it was not entirely accurate since Snowbird would usually transform into a snow white owl, it's a nice enough addition. While he lacked the usual elbow and knee articulation, he did have some extra ones in his ankles, wrist, and neck. Oh, and if you pose him properly, you could actually get him to do a one-handed handstand without the help of any sticky tack. But as I later moved on to collecting larger Marvel Legends figures, that little dude was sold off. And in his place was this, slightly bigger but still little guy. Ironically, the original version of Puck released in the line was a Build-A-Figure meaning his toy was broken up into separate parts with each part being included as a pack-in with a set of other figures. So essentially, you had to buy a number of other guys to get all the puck parts and build him. This method was usually used in order to give collectors much larger characters that would have otherwise been too big to be sold off individually. So why puck was sold in this manner is a mystery. 
it basically led him to being one of the more expensive figures to get in the secondary market. I mean, considering how small he was. Fortunately, years later, Hasbro threw Alpha Flight fans a major bone with an Amazon exclusive box set comprised of six iconic members of the team, including, you guessed it, Puck. It was basically the older Build-A-Figure with an updated and improved head sculpt, which was perfectly fine with me. So that's Puck in a nutshell, the one guy that Alpha Flight can claim as uniquely theirs. Okay, so he has since been a member of X-Force and a non-Canadian Captain Marvel-led space program also called Alpha Flight. Oh well, at least he's being used in some capacity in the Marvel Universe, rather than being forgotten like some of his other fellow Alphans. Isn't that right, Major Maple Leaf? Rest in peace, my friend. So who else here is a fan of Puck, and more importantly, Alpha Flight? If there are any, then count me as your friend for life. Comment below and tell me your story. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. If you enjoyed this story, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to help me tell more. Until the next one.